Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel which is going to be all about my attempt to make a success out of family dinghy cruising and camping. In a moment or two I will show you a quick tour of Tarka, uh, Westray 16. Um, but before I do that just wanted to give a quick backstory of uh, how we've ended up with uh, with that boat and uh, why I'm why I've chosen to uh, to go down the line of uh, of dinghy cruising um, with our young family. It started, uh, well, I suppose, as soon as Kira, our oldest, was born, maybe even before. Um, I sailed most of my life started when I was about 13, mostly dinghy racing, and um, of course, I wanted to, uh, I hope that the children would enjoy sailing too. I think I thought quite early on that a big traditional cruising dinghy it would be a fun way to get into it, something we could all fit into comfortably, it would be stable, reasonably dry, have space to move around. Um, yeah, I imagine something like a Drascom. Bought this book, The um, Dinghy Cruising Companion by Roger Barnes, and uh, that also encouraged me down that route. Um, one of the next things I did was speak to my in-laws who uh, had a Drascom uh, when uh, my wife and uh, and her sister uh, were young girls and they uh, gave me some helpful advice and uh, went one step further. Uh, a couple of months after I'd mentioned it to them, um, Jim called me up and said he bought a boat. Would I go and pick it up for him? And uh, that boat was Sea Bear, a Cornish Cobal. So very, very similar to what I had in mind, and uh, he just found it on eBay towards the end of the first pandemic lockdown in uh, in 2020. And uh, Sea Bear has been fantastic. Uh, Jim said to us, "You can use Sea Bear for anything you like. She can stay with you. You can take her on holiday. Um, do what you like with her." So we've taken her up to the Lake District the last three springs. Uh, we sailed her up in Norfolk, uh, which is where my in-laws live, up on the up on the north coast. She is stable, simple, solid, and uh, sails better than I thought she would, um, given the traditional rig and the loose-footed mainsail. Um, yeah, she's been a superb boat. And the outboard on the back as well, which is pre pretty simple to use, does have the uh, potential problem of the, uh, the prop and the rudder fouling, which seems to be a common problem. It's a problem that, uh, that Tarka has got as well. I'll talk more about that in a bit. but. Um, that is the only uh, issue we've had really with her on uh, on the day sailing basis. Um, but she's not a good camping boat. I did try um, to uh, look into rigging up a tent on her somehow. Um, couldn't see an easy way. And then I tried sleeping out in the open on her one night last summer in July, uh, when there was that really hot spell in, uh, in July last year. Uh, the tides were right while we were up there to, uh, to row out to the mooring at about uh, half past eight. Uh, rig up a camping mat uh, alongside the mast um, on the foredeck, half on the foredeck and half on the uh, the side tanks. Uh, thick sleeping bag, quite a few layers, a little camping pillow, and uh, I really enjoyed my night, but it wasn't very comfy. Uh, the dew came down, everything got a bit damp. Uh, I was as cold as um, I could cope with just about. I wasn't freezing. If I really snuggled down, I could just about keep myself warm enough, but I would have liked to have been um, slightly warmer and a little bit less damp. Uh, but the stars were wonderful. Um, the, uh, the morning dried out, so it was uh, sitting on a, on a sandy bottom uh, most of the night. And then uh, just as the sky was starting to get light, uh, they, the tide lifted, the sea bear up, and, uh, and the, the, uh, the dawn came along and it was a bit misty, it was, it was beautiful. It uh, really encouraged me to uh, want to camp on a dinghy, but not sea bear. So uh, the search started to find something that, uh, that was a better camping boat. Looks at the next size up in the Cornish Shrimper line, um, of which sea bear is uh, not quite the smallest, I think, but, uh, but one of them uh, as a Cornish Cobal. And um, a Shrimper 17, has a foredeck with space underneath it and a, a cockpit tent, um, a cuddy uh, that you can uh, lift up and uh, make an enclosed camping area. And uh, I thought that was a great idea. The Shrimper 17 um, 
was just a bit on the large side, a big heavy boat, um, bigger really than we would want to tow and uh, pretty heavy to move around on the shore. What I really wanted was something that was around sea bear size um, but with the, um, the accommodation under the foredeck. Uh, or possibly just anything that you could put a tent up on. Kittyweight was a, a make of boat that I looked at a lot, and um, beautiful boats. Uh, there's Kittyweight 16, I think, and there's a 14 as well. Really, really pretty boats. Um, and the Kittyweight 16 sounded great, I just couldn't find one available. And uh, well, I, I could, but it was a bit expensive. Um, after a few weeks, Tarka came uh, up on the, uh, on the search on Apollo Duck. Um, the West Australia 16 and uh, she was down in Sussex as well a little way from us but we were doing a camping holiday at the beginning of May really really close to where she was being kept so at the end of our camping holiday last day we, we packed up the tent and uh, and drove over to check her out and uh, she'd been uh, done up refurbished by a previous owner uh, he bought her not all that long ago I don't think and uh, never actually got a chance to sail her but he had painted her and uh, got her um, looking really smart and uh, she looked just the right size and I was quite taken with some of the uh, the, the bronze fittings and the uh, and the brown um, tufnel uh, cleats and blocks as well so we bought her and uh, took her home I had to make a quick decision as to whether or not we're going to take her to the Lake District that year but we decided to play it safe and stick with what we know and take Sea Bear and uh, since then we've had a few trial sails on Tarka on our local lake and uh, one expedition down to uh, Chichester and uh, took her sailing in some quite tough conditions and uh, tested out her storage capacity um, taking uh, all the, uh, the body boards and uh, a bit of wing foiling kit for um, a large group of people we were sailing down, uh, we were camping down with uh, some uh, university friends and uh, they hired some laser bahias and we took a trip up Chichester Harbour to, um, I can't remember the name of the beach, but um, Tarka was, uh, was, <laughs> was the cargo ship for that trip. Uh, she was quite well laden with, uh, with beach kit and, and she, was, she just did a superb job. There have been though uh, quite a few teething problems. I think um, largely down to the fact that uh, Tarka was not sailed by the previous owner. Um, he wouldn't have had a chance to discover quite a lot of the little um, nickels that, um, that we've discovered, a few little rigging issues. Um, I won't talk about these things now, I'll uh, talk a little bit about them um, in, the, uh, in the tour of Tarka and uh, other, other bits and pieces will, will come to light um, as, uh, as the autumn and winter uh, progress and hopefully I'll make a few more of these videos. I want to get her as easy to use as a, uh, a camping day boat as possible to make it uh, to make our camping trips as as stress free as possible. I mean, that's a really important part of making a success of it. So everything has to be just right, or as near to just right as I can make it, and uh, that's been quite a challenge so far. And the challenge is uh, is still going. Uh, and that's really why I thought um, part of the reason I thought these videos might uh, might be of interest to uh, to other people. That's enough for now. Um, let's um, let's get on with the tour. So starting at the stern, see we have uh, an electric outboard, um, which uh, replaced the five horsepower that she came with. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a few moments, and. Uh, Oincy tank, feed locker, and on this side, uh, just a, uh, a little locker. So the uh, the outboard um, came with a, a five horsepower Honda, and. Uh, it was big, it filled the well, and uh, you couldn't raise or lower it. 
Um, so the, uh, the propeller, well it stayed down I should say, and so the propeller shaft um, stuck out uh, through the bottom of the boat and uh, came down beneath the keel uh, which meant that you wouldn't be able to beach um, Tarka, so that had to change for a start. Um, it was also an external fuel tank uh, which meant fuel hoses going up to the uh, to the engine, uh, always potential for a little uh, petrol spillage and, uh, and it was noisy. Um, petrol outboards uh, often are um, so noisy that you can't really have a conversation on the boat while you're uh, motoring along. So lots of things pushed me into replacing the engine and especially replacing it with an electric one uh, and that's what we did. But it wasn't straightforward uh, because it had to fit into this very small well and it also had to fit underneath uh, the tiller. So it ended up after a lot of deliberation settling this uh, Haswing one which seems okay and uh, also had to um, enlarge the, uh, the cutout in the in the transom in the back quite a bit and we might still do a little bit more um, enlarging of that still because I can't still lift it up all the way. Here's the engine coming up. So it still has one more click to go up in this position here. The, uh, the propeller and the motor, which I think is right down next to the uh, propeller, still trails in the water, which is not great. Um, so I'd like to be able to lift it one more click. That's uh, another job for this water. Uh, so that's the engine. Um, also back here, the main sheet, block. Uh, I replaced. Um, this is the, uh, the old one that it came with and uh, as you can see um, it has a cleat and uh, it would cleat pretty much um, automatically uh, every time you pull the, the main sheet in uh, and I really don't like a main sheet that just cleats itself and, uh, and you have to uncleat every time you, you ease it. Um, I don't really feel like I'm uh, fully in control um, so that had to change. The choice I made to replace it was uh, probably more style than substance and I might live to regret it. Uh, all over the boat there are these um, lovely old brown um, tufnel fittings um, and I wanted to keep that look as much as possible. So I bought this simple tufnel replacement but the problem is it doesn't have a ratchet and that's the bit I might live to regret. I think the main sheet loads could be quite high. So so coming further forward now, um, the uh, slightly curved thwart here, uh, buoyancy tanks uh, either side with the uh, hatch covers, and here is this uh, very heavy centre plate. Not quite sure how heavy it is, but it feels very heavy. Um, we've got this um, purchase system here to uh, to pull it up, uh, which is running on. It looks uh, six to one. Um, a couple of problems we've had with the centre plate. Uh, one was the uh, the rope putting it up and down kept on getting jammed. Uh, I thought it was just um, friction with too many turns in the purchase system to start off with. Um, so I took a couple of out but it still got jammed and uh, my wife worked out it was because the um, actual centre plate itself was too close to one of the blocks and was, um, was jamming it. So we stopped running rope through this uh, middle block at the front and uh, just taking it um, on a, on a route around some others. It's not a very good system. There's quite a lot of friction and it doesn't work brilliantly. So uh, uh, that might be something that we um, look at improving at some point in the future, but it does work, so there's no uh, no immediate hurry. And uh, the other issue we have with the centre plate is um, really heavy vibration. Um, so almost as soon as we got the, get the boat up to any kind of speed at all, maybe just um, three and a half knots maybe, um, the uh, centre plate started vibrating. Um, we lifted it up, the vibration stopped. Um, the boat accelerated a bit more, the vibration started again. And um, yeah, it was, I'm, I'm used to a little bit of centre board hum when a boat's planing, but uh, this wasn't anything like planing speed. And uh, it wasn't just a bit of humming, it was it was vibration. So this is something that um, uh, the boat builder's gonna have a look at in a few months time. And um, Tark's going to go into the boat builder for a um, a few little jobs yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll yeah, be able to get to the bottom of that. Could be something loose, could be um, 
Looks like there's a uh, type of mic where they spent quite a bit of time uh, on a mooring and uh, the centre plate just might be in the need of a, of a clean up, a lot of TLC um, to improve the shape. Uh, could well be a combination of two. So uh, that's the centre plate. Uh, under here you can see this is the camping area. So one of the reasons we chose this boat was um, for the ability to camp um, underneath the foredeck, which is something I'd seen in some other designs and I thought was a really nice idea. So there's the camping area. Underneath we have installed a dog bed. We don't have any dogs, but it's um, it's kind of just a big waterproof cushion that fits under the uh, under the foredeck quite quite uh, fits under the foredeck quite well and uh, makes a lovely cosy area, uh, which the kids have really enjoyed. The canopy. Let's just fold it up. Tied down for towing. So up goes the canopy, and that ties down there and there, and uh, and can pop her on as well. And then there's another bit which lives underneath the foredeck, underneath uh, a hatch, that zips on here. And, uh, and comes down to make a, uh, a reasonably enclosed tent. Uh, there are no curtains, but um, I don't know how much we'll miss those. We will find out first time we go camping. So, to the bow. Um, floating mechanism on the jib. This is not the correct attachment. Uh, there should be a, um, a cleat and a, uh, a brass snap shackle here, but they seem to have gone missing. Not quite sure where, where they've been, but they were the <laughs> last time I sailed her, and uh, that's a little bit of a mystery. But um, anyhow, that's just um, temporarily on here for, uh, for 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 today, for demo purposes. Um, there was also a forestay. Uh, the forestay you might have spotted um, is now running down uh, next to the uh, the port shroud. It's just been put there temporarily uh, while we decide whether or not uh, we're going to stick with. Um, this arrangement with uh, with no four stay at all. Uh, the problem was, of course, um, that four stay used to be attached to this eye and the jib uh, to this one back here. And uh, when you fell the jib, it would uh, get caught up in the four stay. And uh, I put a little um, question out on uh, on Facebook, Dean Fusing Association. What should I do? Uh, a lot of people said just do away with the four stay altogether. So uh, that's what we're trying. So there's the fairing mechanism. Um, we uh, have sailed it once without the forestay and uh, it did work much better. Um, but the furling mechanism didn't work perfectly. Um, when we unfurled the jib completely, it did have a little bit of a tendency to um, furl itself back up again slightly. And there's no spring or anything like that in the, uh, in the furler, so it must just have been, I think, the, um, the rope uh, when it furled up. Um, maybe a little bit of um, twist in the rope or something like that. Um, it just seems to encourage the jib to fell back up. Let's see if I can uh, see if we can do it. So there it is. See when it's uh, fully unfurled. If I let go, it just wants to fill itself back in a little bit. And uh, first thing I'd really like to try is just. Uh, Different rope. I've got another little bit of rope I can put on here. It's a bit thinner. It needs a thinner bit of rope to go through the cleat in the uh, in the um, in the cockpit anyway. Um, and I think a bit of rope that's a bit more slippery maybe uh, might just work a little bit better. So that's the job for a little bit later on today. Uh, but while we are at the bow, this trailer, as you can see, there's uh, very very little. Let's just angle it down a bit. There we go. There's very very little room between the uh, the tow bar hitch and uh, and this stanchion, and uh, there really isn't room for the jockey wheel. And uh, the jockey wheel snags on this on the stanchion. Um, you can lower the jockey wheel down, of course. There's a little bit more room there, but there's never enough room to stop it from um, fouling on the stanchion here. And, uh, and this is so close to the back of the car. Uh, that uh, when the boat's hitched on, we can't open the um, the boot. 
So, another job for this autumn, I think, is going to be to get this whole section of the trailer elongated a bit, move the jockey wheel forward, and uh, yeah, get enough space, because um, it's pretty handy to be able to open the boot when the boat's on the back of the car. So this is 3 mil rope rather than 4 mil, and it's, uh, there's less friction, and it's nice and soft. So I'm hoping that it's going to just have a bit less memory, might be the word. Um, it doesn't want to keep on refurbing the jib. Let's give it a try. think it's really solved the problem but um, the rope did need changing anyway because uh, the other one was a little bit um, too, uh, too wide to go through the cleat happily so uh, that did need doing um, but um, yeah still not quite sure why that wants to refurl itself. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that quick look at Tarka and uh, some of the um, problems that we've uh, we've had so far and are trying to overcome um, and uh, that is pretty much it for this week. The next video I make, I expect, is going to be about a trial capsize. Um, that's been uh, on my list of things to do for a while, and I'll talk about why I want to do it um, a little bit more in the uh, in in the next video. But um, that will be the next one, I think. And I know for the next few months, I'm just going to be trying to follow the. The progress of um, of getting Tarka ready for for next spring, uh, when hopefully we'll do our first camping trip. Uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching this far. See you next time. <laughs>